Hey, how's it going, everybody? So, uh, I watched uh, the uh, Breaking the Rules episode with uh, Tommy Sotomayor last night, and uh, I mean, it was it was it was amazing. I've never really heard of this Tommy guy before, but um, extremely logical, um, sharp-witted man, uh, able to keep all these points in his head and. Uh, you know, not use any type of uh, rhetoric. Uh, you know, just I, I didn't see any straw man arguments. Um, I just saw the guy just having a conversation. A, an actual was attempting an actual um, platonic symposium, and I respect that so much. Um, Tried to get out of, you know, these little wishy-washy, nuanced arguments. Um, I'll give you an ex I, you know, in case nobody watched it, you know, he, he was talking about, um, Tony Sotomayor is a, is a black dude, and he's talking about rap music and, you know, uh, interracial couples and, and, and all these different types of issues um, that he, you know, he calls issues uh, because he said that uh, whenever you're a black dude and you're trying to make some rap music, they won't let you do it unless you say, you know, the N-word and you degrade women and you're uh, mean and you fit the stereotypical image of like a thug or something. And then you got the pornos degrading everybody, and um, and then you got movies in Hollywood, you know, where a black dude that's intelligent and stuff, you know, they wouldn't let you get into the movies and things, or they kill you off in the 80s. Um, and even now, like with Star Trek Discovery, the, the black leads that they got, they're weak. They're not, you know, real solid character so it's still yet it's a insult to the black people um and he, he brought up some things that i had just never really thought about before um you know because i'm not i'm not from his culture um and he was able to uh sorry my cat's wanting to get on the podcast too he's he's wanting to talk and say some things Trying to tear up everything, huh, buddy? Come here. Everybody on the internet can hear you. Come here. Oh. All right, buddy. Okay, so um, anyway, what was I saying? Cat, cat interruption. Um. Okay, so yeah, he was talking about how you know the black people can't catch a break, and if they do want to catch a break, they're they're still on a plantation of some kind. They, they're not able to do what they want to do. And he's pointing out that basically everybody's in this position. A lot of white people's in this position too. And then he called it out. He dropped the J-bomb. He did. I didn't. I was, <laughs> I was not fucking expecting that. I wasn't expecting him to talk about a certain tribe of people that allegedly run Hollywood, the rap industry and porn pornography. Um, but he called it out and he said it and he hammered on it and he said, what's going on? What's with these last names all matching up? What's what, what's going on when I finish a movie in the movie theater and all the last names are the same? And oh man. Got got, uh, got someone upset. The, uh, the host of the Breaking the Rules show got you know, real upset because he's of a particular tribe, and uh, it got into this had to have been two hour long bullshit trail of discussion that led fucking nowhere. So when they were talking about you know black neighborhoods and father fatherlessness in black neighborhoods. You know, nobody batted an eye, and the and the black dudes that didn't come up with a nuanced argument and say, well, not all black people. What about Neil deGrasse Tyson? And what, not all this and that. 
So when uh, Tommy brought up Hollywood and porn and rap, you know, the ho the um, Lev, the host of the Breaking Rules, he just got real upset, and he said, "Yeah, but what about this one over here? What about this one over here? Um, what about this situation?" So he started getting all these nuance, and Tommy was like, "We didn't get all this nuance when we were talking about black people." Didn't get into all this nuance when we were talking about Asians. What about white people? And he's like, now that we're talking about the Jews, we're getting into all this nuance. All this, well, what, what, I don't know. What about this guy? What about over here? What about over there? And he called that out too. Bless his heart. He called that out too. And I could tell that he was just dragging. He was ready to move on, but... He was not doing that for the benefit of the hosts of Breaking the Rules. He, you know, he was doing that for the benefit of the audience, of the people, of the people watching, of the chat. And he didn't let himself get too mad, and he, and he got some patience, and he tried to calmly repeat his points. But man, it took for, like, there was no... Admit there is no way that you know. I guess Lev was going to admit that there's something going on with all these last names. There's something going on, and if you don't agree with it, call it out because they're in your tribe. Because with black people, it's ex we expect black people to call out other black people if they're acting like a thug. And if they don't, if other blacks don't call them out, then we think we're in on it with them, okay? Same with the Jews. If, if Jews don't call out other Jews for doing nasty stuff, then everybody starts thinking that, well, I guess you're okay with it. I guess you're in on it, right? Same with um, the mainstream media talking about, you know, Trump and um, white supremacy. They, they They'll say, if you don't vilify Trump and vilify this, then you're you're a Nazi. Okay? So this is just being applied, you know, to the Jews now. And that, you know, they don't like it. It's they don't like it because they don't want to be considered responsible for each other. Now everybody else wants to make all white people responsible for each other. Make all black people responsible for each other. Make all Asians responsible for each other. But there's a little caveat with the Jews, and Tommy called it out. And I guess it it's, I guess this battle is gonna have to take a black person to do it because, you know. Any a white person go out there and say the same things Tommy did, they're gonna they're gonna come after you, man. Um, but with this confusion of political correct climates, if the black people started rising up and saying, you know, screw this rap industry, screw Hollywood, um, forget these pornos, just forget this culture, we're gonna go off. Se self segregate ourselves from you crazy motherfuckers. Everybody self segregate and create their own tribe and then come out and vacation with each other's tribes. Don't force each other. Don't force each other in different cultures where you guys don't understand. You know? When they ended segregation, all the black teachers got fired and had to try to compete to work in the white schools. And of course, that didn't happen. And Tommy made this great point of, like, black people need to make their own hospitals, their own schools. I mean, let white people and, and Asian people come if they want, but don't ban black people. Make it to where everybody in your group can come, and then you got some extra left over, let some other people come. But if there's such a damn problem, such a toxicity about all of us not getting along, there's not enough room in Harvard... Well, let's make some other schools. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? 
Why is that so bad? Why we all got to be a fucking rainbow in every damn building we occupy? You know, maybe that doesn't make black people feel comfortable. Being in a room full of other colored people. Did any of you motherfuckers think about that? Maybe that makes them feel really uncomfortable. And then all the white people are just forcing themselves to be like, oh, I'm not uncomfortable. I ain't uncomfortable. I won't be around all these different people. I ain't uncomfortable. I mean, it's time we quit lying to ourselves. It's uncomfortable to be in a room of mixed cultures where you're not sure who you're going to offend, who you're going to make angry, what kind of problems you're going to cause by you just being you from your culture. How many toes are you going to step on? And how much stress does that put every other religion, race, and creed? How much stress does that cause? Us trying to negotiate, constantly be diplomatic. And what kind of work can, can get done? What kind of work can get done? I remember I was in college and it was Christmas time and people would go say Merry Christmas and they get offended by like, that's not my thing. I'm not religious. You'd have to figure out whatever. It, de it didn't matter the spirit of what I was saying. You had to have the 100% fact, fact checked. And if you didn't know immediately by looking at somebody and be able to read their fucking mind, well, you're a Nazi now. You're some kind of Christmas Nazi that's going around spreading Christmas cheer instead of something else. Whatever. Who fucking knows? But if you're in a if you're in a whole college and you can't say Merry Christmas to anybody and somebody say it back to you, maybe this shit's over with. If other people can't see your intention behind, you know, your actions and your words. There's no point in us trying to interact anymore. There's no point. There's nothing left. No point going to school. No point going out here trying to, you know, work in all these multicultural places. Because it won't work. You'll get in big trouble. Lawsuit. Doxed. Internet mob. Real mob at your house. The dangers are too great out in the world now. Just like what happened with the utopian mouse experiment. All the smarter people are hiding and watching y'all go at each other. You want to say they're all lazy, these millennials or whatever, but, you know, they're not. Hang on just a second.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to take a call from a pretty woman. All right. Um, a lot of interruptions today on the podcast, but, you know, it's okay. Who doesn't like cats and beautiful women? So, moving on. What the hell was I talking about? Tommy Sotomayor, Breaking the Rules podcast, Nuanced Arguments. Um, my cat doing flips. That's entertaining. However, again, distracting. I need to get a camera. He's <laughs> fucking doing flips, playing with his tail. I'm never going to get anything out. All right. So, I need to put this cat up, I think. But he's too cute. He's too cute. I need to just get a camera and point it at him. He's underneath the Christmas tree just doing flips, trying to open presents, trying to get my attention. He hates it when I do podcasts or I'm editing things or writing code or whatever. He's like, you're not paying attention to me. You're not paying attention to me. He's a little uh, little Siamese kidder. They, they like to talk and... Got have all kinds of attention. <laughs> Come here, for buddy. Come on, quit tearing everything up and fucking around. Trying to talk. <laughs> all right, he left to go fuck with something else. <laughs> Been wanting to do this. I I should have done this podcast last night, but uh. Anyway, here we go. Nuanced arguments. Um, it was just bullshit. It, it was just total deflection. What um, you know, Lev was doing uh, to Tommy when he brought up Hollywood, um, all these tribes, you know, the Jewish people um, dictating everything that you can and can't do, um, pegging people into stereotypical roles. Um, and then, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot we could get into about this. There's a whole lot. But my whole point that I wanted to really hammer on is it's just absolute total bullshit that you don't bring up any nuanced arguments about black people, Asians, or Mexicans. But you want to bring up a thousand nuanced arguments about Jews, and how that person's not acting like a Jew, blah, blah, blah. Yet you won't say a thug, oh, that's not acting like a black person. Never said that. So there's a definite double standard that might be unbeknownst to, you know, the the Jews themselves. I, I, or they're just, I don't know, or he, or he's just, I don't know. I guess it's hard to take criticism, easy to easy to dish it out. Um, but I really didn't like that. I, it really made me yeah, um, upset that that just little thing couldn't be admitted. But like, yeah, um, it's not right what 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 the Jews have done to black people. And Tommy even brought up the the Jewish slave ships, you know, and how a lot of Jewish people were, uh, you know, plantations owners and and the, were the first ones to buy the slaves and all this stuff. So why why isn't there any um, uh, reparations being asked of of Israel? Why doesn't Israel have to pay any reparations for, for slavery? American slavery. You know why? And these are great, great questions. How come Irish white people are blamed for slavery when the Irish were slaves? Yet Jewish people were not blamed for anything at all and they literally owned these slave ships. Owned them. It's in writing. It's it's in the ledgers. 
Um, and I've known about this, and I, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to say anything. I'm not a black guy. I can't say whatever I want to say um, and not get doxxed or lose my job, lose everything. I mean, I'm saying it anyway. But, you know, uh, it, it's going to take... Um, you know, black people standing up against this to, to do and making their own thing independent of everyone else without anybody telling them what to do, without anybody saving them, with, with them saving themselves and get escaping this new plantation. You know, Kanye was on to it. Everybody said he's crazy. Everybody said he don't know what he's talking about. Kanye is right. You know, slavery is a choice. That's what Christianity teaches us. You know, you can either choose to live a slave or die a Christian. Hell of a choice, but that's the only choice that humans have ever had. Ever. You're either willing to live like a fucking worm... Or you're willing to die a man. You, you, you go around, you live in your life doing something for somebody else forever. Eventually, you get to the point where you cannot take it. You cannot take this shit. You'd rather be dead. You see no future for your kids, no future for anybody. <coughs> you have enough of it and you stand the fuck up and you flip the table over. Now, I know that's what a lot of BLM people think they're doing, <coughs> but that's that's not what's happening. Oh, that shit is never going to change anything. What will change is going off grid. What will change is getting the skills to not require society to take care of you like a baby. I'm seeing a lot of black people start to do this. Barricade Garage. He's out there chopping his wood, growing his own food. That, that is wonderful. And he makes jokes. He's like, that's the most gangster thing you can do is grow your own garden. You know, he's right. That is the most, you know, gangsta thing you can be doing, man. Because you don't need anybody. You don't even need a gang. You're good. You've got your family. Right? You got your food. You got your guns. You know how to work on your vehicles. That dude's got some shit figured out. And is it a great influence um, on the black community? Not these other these other jokesters, these other mainstream black people. They're just trying to get you to fall in line of the plantation. Just fall in line. Act like them. Not act like your own culture, your own people. And once that happens, once the mainstream loses their cannon fodder, and these people start to self-individuate and chop their own wood and grow their own gardens and get married, ooh, it's all over. It's, it's all, the rap music's over. Hollywood's over. Pornography is over. All of it. The money is over for them. The gold stops. The great resignation. And what are they going to do when black people and white people start talking to each other about this shit? And stop hating each other. 
that seems to be the last thing that the mainstream wants is for um, a redneck and a thug to see eye to eye and give each other gardening tips. It's like the last thing <clears throat> the mainstream media wants is that. And now we're starting to talk to each other a little bit here and a little bit there. One thing that I really appreciated from from Tommy that has been difficult for me to see about my own culture um, is truly how strange white people are. Um, I know that most white people, you know, are serial killers, have strange fetishes, um, these odd sexual quirks. Um, you know, and as for the women, they have this Fifty Shades of Grey shit going on. Um, you know, they, they like the Joker. They want to have sex with the Joker, all these white women. Like what? The Insane Clown Posse. Um, Slipknot. Marilyn Manson. Uh, when I was in school, all the chicks wanted to fuck Marilyn Manson. What a, what, how sick. What a monster looking motherfucker. I mean, ugh, what a disgusting fucking thing to have inside of you um i never understood it i do not get that he looks like a fucking vampire and uh and that's and again that's hot to women um you know particularly these white chicks so he also this um tommy guy brought up something that i have repressed that i have blocked out of my mind that i did not want to think about because you know i've always had a hard time making friends with other men um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and, I, and I noticed this with a lot of white men. When I was in high school and we had gym class, we, you know, we'd have to go take a shower. I noticed all the white kids in there would be like hitting each other's butts, ta uh, hit, bag tagging each other, hitting each other in the nuts, doing weird sexual jokes, um, you know, physical ones, um, a lot of gay play, and it made me extremely uncomfortable, I was very uncomfortable, and I was ready to fight, I was not okay with some strange boy naked touching me in the, in the shower, and, uh, people thought I was really weird for not being okay with it, and being down to play butt play in the shower after gym, um, and that maybe something was wrong with me, and, uh, you know, I'm this weird, you know, heavy metal kid with, uh, you know, with some emotional problems or whatever, and that don't want to play in the shower. You know, uh, it got to the point where I, I felt so out, like such an outsider. When it was gym class, I would just bring my CD player and listen to some Perfect Circle and just, just kind of hang out, and I just became that weird kid. You know, and as I've got older, I'm like, thank God I was that weird kid that sat in the corner and listened to my music and just, you know, daydreamed. And then eventually there was this, these other kids, some were kind of unhealthy, some felt the same way I did. They were very uncomfortable um, in the shower. And basically, if I didn't work out, I didn't have to, you know, go to the shower, so... Stupid, right? I, I, whatever. So I formed this little group of friends, and we sat on the bleachers, and while well, everybody else exercised and played, and uh, we kind of created a little philosophy group. We just talked about stuff, talked about TV shows, shared music. We'd listen to music with each other, and uh, then I finally came to look forward to gym class. It was kind of like a little break. <laughs> um, but as Tommy was talking about how a lot of white dudes do this gay shit to, like, challenge each other. Some kind of game that we play. I've noticed it. I've just blocked it out, and I don't hang out. I just didn't make friends with dudes, and I wasn't around it anymore. Um, I remembered that. And it, and it pushed me out of, I guess, white culture. 
I mean, I, I didn't hang out with a lot of black people. I didn't hang out with anybody. It made me isolated. Um, cause I didn't know, I couldn't relate to anybody, you know? Um, you know, and then you hang out with, with if you hang out with black people, they're saying the N word here, N word there, you know, and I try to say it and be cool and it's, oh, no, 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 no. So I don't know where to hang out. <laughs> so I just didn't hang out, uh, anywhere, I guess, and started reading books, but I, uh, I always kind of felt bad about it. I was like, man, I, I wish I could, you know, make some male friends and, and things and, and then I and then uh, I re, and then I would remember was a child wrestling. All us dudes would try to wrestle with each other and stuff. And black people don't do that. Re, Mexican people don't do that. Asian people don't do that. They try to fight each other, like strikes, and practice that maybe. Boxing. But no, white people want to wrestle, grab sweat, grunt, and I hate admitting it, but it's fucking true, it's kind of gay, man, and I'm upset about it, I'm upset, I'm fucking upset about it, um, why, why do white people love touching each other like that, I don't, he's right, and I can't sit here and deny that. I can't sit here and deny those memories I have and how I felt like an outsider. Now I want, I want, you know, I don't know. Is it is it in white people DNA? Why isn't it not in mine? Well, you know, why was I like, oh fuck this? And then the other some of the other white kids I knew in school that were like, uh uh, what was different about them? Because as far as I know, I don't have other races in, in me. Um, I'm, you know, I'm straight up Irish man. And so, where, what is this? It's, it's, it's something weird. It is something weird. Um, the, and the fetishes. And I don't, I, you know, I, I just need to bring this up because I, I have never heard somebody talk about, I haven't heard somebody from an, an, another culture comment on this in an intelligent way. Um, and I could tell it bothered him. He's like, yeah, this, y'all are weird. And I'm like, yeah, that is weird, man. Like, uh, it's, it is disturbing. Crazy white people. And, you know, we are crazy. We got some crazy fucking ideas. Crazy desires. I want... It just... It got me shook, man. It's just... Uh, I don't... There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Um, and I've never felt this way. But, but, because I guess I haven't heard that type of criticism before. Um, but it's criticism that must be considered. It must be listened to. And it must be looked at. Because it is a fault. It is something wrong with white males doing this gay shit. And y'all motherfuckers know who you are. Deny it all you want. I know I know most of you motherfuckers do this gay shit, this wrestling shit. Oh yeah, I didn't finish that story. I was doing wrestling with my friends on a trampoline and shit, and then people start grabbing you here, grabbing this, and... I started feeling comfortable. I quit doing that too. I got really into jiu-jitsu because there was none of that. And it was quick strikes, um, some grapples. I did not like the this shit getting on the ground. 
the guard position that was so gay i felt so uncomfortable with that did not like that um i like to learn how to beat the fuck out of somebody and then get out of a fight and run away um if i if i can't win um I didn't want to learn how to grapple on the ground. I ain't. And the, you know, as you get more advanced, you're trying to learn how to fight other martial artists. And I'm like, I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in defending myself on the street or something in case something happens. And um, I have my hands and I I I can do something and save save my family. Okay. I ain't interested in getting on my fucking ground with you sweating on my face and grunting. <clears throat> I got out of that too. But I just started to realize there's a lot of things that <clears throat> I've stopped doing <laughs> because it's so gay. And I don't like it. And it's very uncomfortable for me. And uh, <clears throat> I just see, I, I find that a lot of these practices are unnecessary. Unnecessary unnecessary gayness and it's time we talk about it it's time we talk about the secret homos in the Christian community it's time we talk about the pastors that are gay that keep a, a trophy wife to keep up appearances. It's time we talk about these disgusting truths about our own people and quit casting blame to other races, to the blacks, to the Jews, the Mexicans, taking the gerbs. Okay? We got our own motherfucking problems that we need to start addressing alone with each other. Because this, because uh, you know, like, uh, like that that dude Tommy was saying, we need to go and start going to our own colored neighborhoods and start fixing our own shit. Because that's the only people that's going to listen to you. Black people will listen to another black guy. White people will listen to another white guy. Jews will listen to another Jew. Okay. It will never, ever work any other way. Say you have a mixed black, white Jew. A mixed Jew and black. Okay? Who's going to listen to them? Right. And that's the point Tommy was making. And that's even the point Muhammad Ali made a long time ago. Who's going to listen to the mixed people? Who who will they belong to? Uh, the the mixed tribe of people? Well, what about this person that is Asian and Mexican mixed? Maybe they don't want to hang out with a black Jew. All right. Okay, see? See the problem here? And if we're not allowed to talk about it, and it's allowed to fester, and the problems are allowed to, you know, just kind of procre procreate, um, then we're going to have no future. Because a lot of things that people are missing out on is human reaction. How humans react. What is built in us innately. What are things that we cannot change. You know, why, why did we develop whites around our eyes? You know, why aren't there different colored whites in our eyes why aren't there greens and blues why are we all white in our eyes but have different colored skin 
That's because it doesn't matter who you are, what race you are, where you come from. You're part of our, we're all part of the human tribe because of our eyes. The white in our eyes lets us know what direction you're looking in. Let's us know what you value and what you're paying attention to. Let's us know what you're planning. Are you, do you have plans of good or do you have plans of evil? And then you go a step further into that, into cultural differences, and it becomes a mystery as to what your look, your mind's eye is looking at. Unless you're in a culture of people where you go to a place like a church and you all understand and know what your mind's eye is looking at, and you feel comfortable. When somebody's wearing sunglasses around you, you feel uncomfortable because you don't know what they're looking at. They could be looking right at you and planning something. And likewise, when you're at college with a multicultural student body, you it's like everybody's wearing sunglasses. You don't know what everybody's looking at. You don't know what their plans are. You don't know what's going on. And it naturally makes everybody feel very uneasy and defensive. And why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't it? Why should you feel comfortable around a thousand people that think a thousand different things and have a thousand different religions? It would be stupid not to be worried. So we got to talk about these things. And we have to throw this nuanced shit out the window unless we're going to apply it to everything. If we're going to apply it to the Jews, the whites, the blacks, everything, then it's going to take a thousand years. We can't do that. There's a reason a majority of black people do this thing, a majority of white people do this thing, a majority of Jewish people do that thing. Okay? There's a reason. We have to talk about it. It's because there's commonalities in each of the cultures that accept these things. White people in the gym room accept it that you're gay. Okay, they accept it. Everybody on a football day, football team has some sort of gay shit going on. Um, and you can call it camaraderie. I don't know what you want to call it. But it's a, it's a male closeness that is uh, gay as the day is long. And it is not something that I, 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 that I, I have seen in other races. And people can say, you know, maybe there's an advantage or blah, blah, blah. I, I don't care. I don't want that advantage. I don't want it. I'd rather, um, you know, do, uh, do something else. I'd rather invent a, a ray gun. Okay? How about that? I'd Fuck that. Also, I heard Tommy Sotomayor bring up another good point about white people that I've noticed. And this was a revelation to me because I, you know, it, it, other races don't talk to each other like this. We usually shut the fuck up and talk our shit behind each other's back, and we need to stop that. We need to start telling jokes to each other out in the open so we understand what's happening. And he just got me laughing because it's true. The, you know, he was saying that white people love to, um, love disturbing shit. Like, even though they wouldn't do it in, like, most of us in real life, um, we, in the secret, we go watch some of the most deprived, fucked up shit and get off on it. Um, you know, and, and, he, and he's right about that, uh. You know, people get off on this really, you know, just go um, s scroll sometime through through the old uh, porno websites. And it's got, you know, your sister, your brother, your mom, orgies. It's got, um, you know, people shitting on each other, people beating each other up. You, uh, you've got 
favorite, um, you know, monster uh, uh, pornos from the anime world. Uh, you've got, you know, just fucked up shit, guys. Just absolutely fucking disgusting. Has nothing to do with a male and a female coming together um, and having a family um, and love and romance and nothing to do with that that it has to do with violent fucking in destruction it's basically a uh, a good metaphor for what uh white people porno is is the xenomorph the xenomorph rapes comes is only driven on instinct and its end result is your death its pleasure your displeasure um not a not a nice human baby being formed but demons bursting out of you and running amok and not only while you're getting raped the 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 human is in, in enjoying it in these porno websites. It's kind of like a, 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 a an S and M uh fucking bullshit. All right, and I'm sick and fucking tired of this not being called out. Now the only white boys that are my homies out there, are these Warhammer 40k. Uh, soldiers, you know, y'all motherfuckers are my homies. I mean, you, you get it. You understand the heresy that is afoot. You understand Slanish or Slanesh, however the fuck you want to say it. I've just read it. I haven't heard somebody say the word, but y you Warhammer boys out there, you fucking understand what is at stake with our race. You get it. And you want to make it better. And you do. You're out there every day with your memes, with your with your stories. You're trying to play some games that have a, some substance, some meaning, some feeling. Teaches you the values of sacrifice. Of what it is to be a man. And to stand against the armies of hell and chaos. And to find the good that's left in the Imperium. One of the last bastions of white sanity left on the internet is the realms and worlds of Warhammer 40k. And also, you de you delve into those archetypes, those stories, deeper than the minds of Moria. I mean, they have some... Look, look at what happened with the Eldar and um, the cult of Slanesh. How they had these mega orgies in tortured animals and, t and it just was open and they opened up the gates of hell and created a demon god Slanesh. That that idea is so Jungian. It's so deep. It's shadow. Okay. The next conclusion. The next thing. That has to happen in, in Warhammer to resolve it is the humans and the remaining good Eldar and and even the orc boys and the Tau they've got to come together in some way or at the very least the humans need to stop their shit and making uh, servitors and all this shit and 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 find the Christian God. Stop worshiping the emperor, and that way they can create an a god to fight Slanesh and Corn. Okay. Oh, you can't fight Corn. You can't. You know, he's in. You can find a balancing force, absolutely. Because before the warp was destabilized, 
Everybody wasn't so deprived and fucked up, and those gods did run the warp. And then when everybody got deprived and crazy and, and, and satanic, well then that those good gods lost their power, and here comes Korn and Slanesh, and um, it's all fucking over, boys and girls. But if the humans could change the interior of their mind, which is connected to the warp, then everything will get better. I made a video about the Care Bears. Okay? The Care Bears could get in there and fuck up corn. Okay? Because they're not in there trying to hurt him. They're not in there with hate. They're in there with care and their magical chest tattoos and their Care Bear stare. <laughs> that would balance shit out. You can't go charging into the warp, into the chaos realms with macro cannons. You're just more fire adding to the fire. But a Care Bear is like an ice cube in a, in a fire. It's like liquid nitrogen in a fire. It's not the same energy. It's caring. It's caring. Not fear, not anger, no hate. I care about you. That's what would save the emperor, the, the imperium. People could create their own astronomicons. The emperor was one man. Telling the world that any of you can be this. Any of you could be me. Any of you could figure out um, how to make your own space marines. Anybody. Apply yourself. And just by him applying himself, the emperor became a beacon to humanity. And also attracted the tyranids like a moth to a flame. But imagine if all the humans lit up like the emperor. Imagine if they would have listened to him. The emperor himself was a psyker. And then they're going to try to outlaw it? It's ridiculous. But very accurate. Very accurate analogy to what happened with Jesus Christ. And what the church did and covered up his true teachings. And made it all about the church instead of the spirit of God. In this same way. In the same way that the Imperium fights against the agents of chaos... We've got to do the same here with all this gay shit happening in the, the showers at, at school. We've got to stand up to the depravity that we see in our own tribe. You see something going on in your church you don't like? Stand up and call it out and say that the, you, the Spirit of God has called me to stand and against you. Do it publicly. What are they going to do? Speak the truth. Just speak out. It's the most powerful thing. It's, it's more powerful than, an, than a nuclear bomb. Because then people are forced to respond. And if they got these long, nuanced responses, they're wrong. They're wrong. And they don't want to face the truth. Because I've brought up this shit about, you know, what's going on in the locker rooms? Oh, they're just playing. You know, they're just seeing who's the toughest. I'm like, all these nuanced arguments about it. I'm like, okay.
still sounds pretty gay to me. But there is a, such a strangeness about about the white people that I have just really. So you know, thanks, man. Thanks, Tommy, for helping me see um, faults that I that I need to start calling out. It's my responsibility to call it out. You're right. And I'm gonna call it out. I'm, uh, you know, I just had forgot about it. I had, because I don't, I, I don't hang out with anybody. I, I don't want, I, I don't know. I just feel uncomfortable around people, and I don't want to. But I think they're trying to touch my butt, you know, or something. I, you know, I don't know, man. What's going on? It's fucking weird. I was hanging out with one guy. And Geo brought this up in the chat, and I was like, ooh, this is true, too. I was hanging out with with uh, some friends, and this has happened several times with white people. I have never done this to somebody. Let me tell you what happened. When I was a teenager, I was hanging out with some of my friends, and then they turned on a porno. And they started watching it, and I shit you not, the dude started like, he's like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to jerk off. Is that okay? I'm like, no, no. I, and then I left. And Geo said that that happens. D dude, white dudes like try to jerk off of each other and have this strange comfort about it. And I, di I didn't. I was like, uh, no, man, this is weird. This is weird. This is not okay. Okay. Three years ago, I made, you know... I made another, I made a friend, and I started hanging out, um, going to his house, start, we were just, just drinking, playing PlayStation. A few weeks into hanging out, getting to know him, this dude opens his laptop and he just starts showing me shit, and, he, and then he turns on some porn, and showing me all, and he showed me all this stuff, and he showed me this, uh, this... <laughs> black dude butt fucking this white girl and he's like oh my god you know this porn star so and so she's so hot and when i see her i just gotta bust a nut <laughs> and i and he didn't whip his dick out or anything you know but i was so uncomfortable that here i was just hanging out with this guy and now all of a sudden I'm watching this porno with, and, and I and I quit hanging out with him. I, I felt so uncomfortable, but it's something that I have noticed. It needs to be called out, and we can't act like it's not true. Um, I see all these white people and Republicans and people out here pointing fingers, pointing blame. We need to start blaming ourselves for some shit and uh, taking some stock and calling each other out and stopping this shit. I'm sick of it. It's very uncomfortable and disturbing to me, and um, we need to talk about it. Anyway, that was just on my mind. I want to quit talking about it. I want to go do something else and cleanse my mind palate, and I'll come back and talk about some, some other things. But um, anyway.